Hi. In this video we will discuss in detail the legendary four-cylinder engine from Mercedes-Benz, the M271 Evo. From September 2009 the M271 Evo is used in the blue efficiency models of the C-Class and E-Class. There are three power variants, 115, 135 and 150 kilowatts. The M271 Evo combines the blue efficiency requirements for economy and environmental compatibility with comfort and driving pleasure. The cylinder head and the intake valves have been adapted to cope with the demands of homogeneous direct injection. The M271 Evo operates according to the four-valve concept with two camshafts, two camshaft adjusters and central spark plugs. The camshaft adjusters of the forged intake and exhaust camshafts are vein cell adjusters and have been further improved. They allow the timing to be varied steplessly and more quickly than before. The camshaft adjuster is a hydraulic swivel drive. The adjustment angle is 40 degrees crank angle, corresponding to an angle of 20 degrees performed at the adjuster. The adjustment of the camshafts optimizes the engine torque curve and improves exhaust characteristics. A spring-loaded pin locks the camshaft adjuster in the basic position when the engine is switched off in order to prevent uncontrolled movement of the adjuster during startup. The new camshaft adjuster is 34% lighter while the rate of adjustment is twice as fast. The M271 Evo features two crankcase ventilation systems, partial load ventilation with single cyclone oil separator and full load ventilation with double cyclone oil separator. The single cyclone oil separator is responsible for separating the oil at the partial load ventilation line. The partial load ventilation line runs from the left engine support flange into the charge air distribution line downstream of the throttle valve actuator. Via an opening in the crankcase the blow-by gas flows into the single cyclone separator which is located behind the left engine support. The oil separator is in the form of a cyclone, incoming air is made to spiral and the resulting centrifugal forces separate the oil, which flows back into the housing. The air cleaned in this way leaves the oil separator through a combination valve installed above the cyclone, which acts as a check valve in the event of overpressure in the charge air distribution line and is an air shutoff valve to protect the catalytic converter. The full load ventilation line runs from the oil separator into the charge air line upstream of the turbocharger. The oil separators are integrated in the cylinder head cover. The full load ventilation gases emerge on the exhaust side. A parallel double cyclone oil separator provides highly efficient and precise oil separation. The camshafts are driven by a newly developed tooth bush chain. The bearing for the leading slide rail and tensioning rail is arranged to have no contact with the timing case cover. This results in a considerable reduction in noise. The lower position of the chain tensioner and resultant reduction in force in the chain drive contribute to this. The two Lanchester balance shafts are driven by a second chain, which is also located at the front of the engine. The oil pump is driven via the left Lanchester balance shaft. A new simplex bush chain is used for this. Besides the lower mass, the impact forces of the bushes in the tooth roots are reduced by the chain link striking the shoulders on each side of the sprocket and absorbing a part of the impact pulses. With the new Lanchester balancer it has been possible to achieve a considerable reduction in disturbing vibrations caused by piston movements, providing comfortable smooth running. The Lanchester balancer operates with two contra-rotating balance shafts, each mounted in three bearings in a one-piece die-cast aluminum housing. These tubular steel shafts are inserted into the bearing channel of the housing and are then bolted to the imbalance mass segments. The faces of the imbalance mass segments also act as locators and axial bearings for the shafts in the housing. The housing in which the balance shafts are mounted is located inside the oil pan and is bolted to the crankcase from underneath. This housing also acts as a ladder type frame which serves as a stiffening bridge for the bearing seats and thus improves the cross bracing of the crankcase. The M271 Evo features homogeneous direct injection with spark ignition and turbocharging. These improve fuel economy and significantly reduce pollutant emissions. The current fuel pressure in the rail is registered by the rail pressure sensor and forwarded to the quantity control valve. This valve causes the fuel high-pressure pump to build up a pressure of up to 140 bar in the rail. The exact injection time is calculated by the MI-SFI control unit. The MI-SFI control unit evaluates signals from the following components. Throttle valve actuator, camshaft sensor, crankshaft hall sensor, RPM sensor, pressure sensors, temperature sensor. The timing of the intake and exhaust valves is variable. 
This means that the mixture formation in the combustion chamber can be adapted to suit the current operating conditions. The intake and exhaust valves are controlled by the adjustable camshafts. The exact position of the camshafts is detected by the camshaft sensors and forwarded to the MI SFI control unit. In a storage type fuel injection system with fuel rail the pressure generation and injection functions are decoupled. The injection pressure is generated and regulated by the fuel high pressure pump. The pressure is available in the rail during injection. The MI SFI control unit actuates the quantity control valve and the fuel injectors spray the fuel into the combustion chamber with high precision. The fuel injectors are installed so that the fuel is injected at a certain angle which is selected so as to prevent the fuel from being deposited on the wall of the combustion chamber or flooding the intake valves. The multi-hole valves in the fuel injectors produce individual jets which are precisely adjusted according to the charge movement and the internal pressure in the cylinder. This results in highly stable combustion, low emissions and low fuel consumption. The fuel high pressure pump is located at the rear of the cylinder head. It is driven via the intake camshaft. The fuel high pressure pump is a single plunger pump. Four cams enable four deliveries to be made for each rotation of the camshaft. The quantity control valve forms a unit with the fuel high pressure pump. It functions as an intake throttle and serves to regulate the fuel quantity with max fuel pressure of 140 bar. For the regulation process, the current fuel pressure is registered by the rail pressure sensor in the rail. The rail pressure sensor measures the current fuel pressure in the rail and forwards a corresponding voltage signal to the MI SFI control unit. When the engine is switched off, the quantity control valve interrupts the fuel supply, thus dissipating the high pressure. The low pressure system operates with a control unit for the fuel pump and a fuel pressure sensor in the fuel feed line. It regulates the fuel pump according to the engine requirements. The fuel pressure is kept constant as a reference. During forced induction, the flow energy of the exhaust gas is used to drive the turbocharger. Fresh, clean air flows to the compressor inlet via the air filter. It is directed via the compressor outlet into the charge air line upstream of the charge air cooler. The air in the charge air line is compressed as a result of the high rotational speed of the compressor turbine that creates a high volumetric flow. The maximum boost pressure is 1.2 bar. The noise damper at the compressor outlet dampens the boost pressure variations and the associated flow noises that occur during rapid RPM changes. The compressed air flows via the charge air line to the charge air cooler. This cools the charge air, which has heated up due to compression, and directs it via the charge air line to the charge air distribution line. The boost pressure is regulated by means of a boost pressure control flap, wastegate, installed at the turbine inlet. The boost pressure control pressure transducer actuates the vacuum cell of the boost pressure control flap with boost pressure. If the boost pressure is too high, the exhaust gases are directed around the turbine. This reduces the speed of the turbocharger and thus the boost pressure. The pressure transducer is actuated by the MI-SFI control unit according to a performance map and according to load. To do this, the MI-SFI control unit evaluates the following sensors and functions. Charge air temperature sensor, pressure sensor upstream of throttle valve, pressure sensor upstream of compressor impeller, accelerator pedal sensor, load request from driver, crankshaft hall sensor, engine speed, knock control, transmission overload protection, overheating protection. The pressure transducer actuates the vacuum cell of the wastegate with boost pressure from the charge air line. The vacuum cell then opens the wastegate, thus opening the bypass. The exhaust flow bypasses the turbine will via the bypass line, regulating the boost pressure and limiting the turbine speed. The pressure sensor upstream of the throttle valve measures the charge air pressure in the charge air line. The charge air pressure deforms the membrane, which acts on the potentiometer. This causes the resistance of the potentiometer to change, thus influencing the voltage signal that the pressure sensor forwards to the MI-SFI control unit. The pressure sensor downstream of the throttle valve measures the charge air pressure in the charge air distribution line and forwards this value to the MI-SFI control unit. The pressure sensor upstream of the compressor impeller registers the pressure on the clean air side for the MI-SFI control unit. This enables it to detect any sudden pressure drop, for example due to clogging of the air filter cartridge. The pressure sensor upstream of the compressor impeller is located in the charge air line upstream of the turbocharger. Due to the inertia of the shaft, the compressor impeller and the turbine wheel, the turbocharger always spins on slightly after the vehicle starts to decelerate. Because of this, a boost pressure surge runs back to the compressor when the throttle valve actuator is closed quickly. 
This boost pressure surge causes a situation at the compressor impeller where there is a low delivery volume and high pressures, which leads to so-called turbocharger whistling, brief howling and mechanical stress. In order to prevent this boost pressure surge, the blow-off valve opens and quickly releases the pressure in the intake line. When the MESFI control unit detects the transition from load mode to deceleration mode, it actuates the blow-off valve. The blow-off valve opens the bypass at the compressor impeller and the boost pressure is reduced. In load mode the blow-off valve is closed by an integral spring. The swirl flap control changes the air ducting in the intake ports. Each cylinder has two intake ports. One of these can be closed by a swirl flap. The swirl flap actuator motor adjusts the swirl flaps via a linkage. Four of the eight intake ports are continually closed for the purpose of swirl generation. For the swirl flap control the ME SFI control unit scans the following sensors. Pressure sensor downstream of throttle valve, crankshaft hall sensor, swirl flap hall sensor. The ME SFI control unit actuates the swirl flap actuator motor with a pulse width modulated signal according to a performance map. The swirl flaps are adjusted particularly in the warm-up phase in order to achieve better mixture formation. At idle and at low engine speeds the swirl flaps are closed. This produces a strong swirl effect, which has a positive influence on mixture formation. The swirl flaps are adjusted according to load and engine speed in order to produce the optimum movement of air at all times. At high engine loads the swirl flaps are fully open. The swirl flaps are open when de-energized. This is ensured by a return spring integrated in the actuator motor. In the M271 EVO an electronically controlled two-disc thermostat with three-disc functionality ensures that the coolant temperature is controlled by a performance map. The coolant temperature is regulated for each operating point according to requirements. The advantages of this are as follows. The friction power of the engine is lower as the oil and engine temperatures are increased in parallel at partial load. The engine temperature is significantly reduced in the high load range, allowing the engine to achieve greater efficiency at these operating points. When starting from cold, there is no flow through the coolant circuit. No coolant flows through the cylinder head. This enables the combustion chambers and cylinder barrels to heat up quickly in the warm-up phase. When the coolant reaches 80 degrees Celsius, the thermostat opens the bypass circuit. Only at 103 degrees Celsius is the target coolant temperature reached under partial load, and the coolant is regulated to this temperature as the cooling circuit starts to open. The oil circuit is supplied by a regulated oil pump. It offers high displacement in a small installation space and high efficiency. The regulated oil pump is designed as a Bain type pump. With its infinitely variable delivery rate it is able to regulate the oil pressure. The regulated oil pump is flange mounted on the end face of the rear bearing seat of the Lanchester balancer housing and is driven by the intake side balance shaft via a pair of gear wheels. The oil pump is regulated on the clean oil side. The oil is taken from the main oil duct and directed into the regulating chamber. In this regulating chamber the oil pushes against the spring-loaded set collar of the vein type pump. When the target pressure is reached in the main oil duct, the set collar is pushed against the spring force so that the eccentricity of the vein cell is reduced. This reduces the effective size of the oil pump and the delivery rate decreases so that the oil pressure cannot rise further. The oil level is registered by an oil level check switch, which transmits a signal to the ME SFI control unit when the minimum oil level is reached. This informatian is forwarded to the instrument cluster via CAN so that the customer is advised to check the oil level in good time before the lubrication becomes inadequate.